To thee we come, O Lord our God. Before thine altar, Father, thou knowest best our yearning hearts. This supplication answer. Lift up from what thy people, Lord. Bless us, O God, O Father, bless our Lord. Under thy cross we stand prepared to serve thee with devotion, be it with sweat of blood or tears, or humble resignation, for we thy people Spirit. Amen. We will go into the altar of God. God be joy in my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of your conscience. Having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness, let us now all recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For penance for the next three nights, and remembering to say your evening prayers, this being the solemnity of Holy Trinity, that we offer a prayer unto Almighty God, that he would send forth the Holy Spirit to us, as promised by his Son, Jesus Christ. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and absolution and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. But when the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we have done, but because of his mercy. He saves us through the path of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out and through Jesus our Savior. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, O God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have Christ, have Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to whom God in the high heavens and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you and give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. 
Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. Let us pray. O Holy Trinity, Triune God, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Turn our wanderings into a pilgrimage, drawing us over closer to who you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, living and reigning as one God, forever and ever. Amen. Jimmy, would you please proclaim the word? A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come and down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger, rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as our own. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim. For you are being exalted above all forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips. Through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, O Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. But whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, Lord Christ. Jesus Christ.
I will not leave you comfortless. I will send to you another advocate, the Holy Spirit, who will teach you all things and bring to mind all the things that I've said unto you. These words are taken from the Gospel according to St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Back in 1989, when I started an official sabbatical from the church to be caregivers for first my dad and then my mom. One of the first jobs and positions I had was a substitute teacher. I started with teaching special needs and I thoroughly loved that. Uh, because that kind of went hand in hand because in the afternoon I was also a sight leader working with mentally challenged young adults. But with the teaching I found myself going into high school and teaching mostly in the high schools. Chigabee Comprehensive High School which I graduated from and Chigabee High, the rivals. I taught a cadre of subjects, English, history, and mathematics. It's funny because in preparation for teaching high school, I had an idea of what I would be teaching that day. So I had to be aware of, of the subject. And I have to say that mathematics was not always strong for me. History, yes. Uh, mathematics, of course, I was able to balance a checkbook. Uh, but then I started to teach Algebra 1 as a substitute, Geometry, Algebra 2. And one of the interesting things is I remember one night sitting at the table at that time I was living at home with my mom and dad. My dad said, ah, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing homework. He said, you know how hard it was for me to get you to do your homework? And so I said, well, things have a way of coming around. And I said to my dad, I said, you know, I have to know the subject. Because if I start talking and I don't know what I'm talking about, the kids are going to pick it up and they're going to say, he, you know, he's full of it. He doesn't really know what he's talking about. And so I went back to school as an adult to refresh myself. You know, as Christians, we are all called upon to know our faith. If you were called upon to actually stand and to explain to someone your faith, would you be able to? I know that the Polish National Catholic Church were not papists. The clergy can marry. The church is owned by its people. But what of our faith? And so the foundations of our faith, a textbook, is found in many sources. The Holy Bible, for one. That is the ultimate source. But we also have a catechism. This is the catechism that we give to people, to young adults who are studying for the sacrament of confirmation. Baptism kind of scratches the surface, but in preparation for the sacrament of confirmation, it goes a little bit deeper. Today I want to spend a couple of moments with you because today is the solemnity of the Holy Trinity. And what do we know about the Holy Trinity? Well, one God and three divine persons. Now, in the early church, there were a lot of discussions and arguments and people who were killed trying to define what the Holy Trinity was all about. Theologians, all the way back from the beginning of Christianity, right up until now, have tried to understand the concept 
of the Holy Trinity, one God in three divine persons. Someone gave a definition that the Holy Trinity is like the three <clears throat> stages of water. You have water, the liquid, you have ice as being a solid, and you have steam as being another attribute of that same substance. So what I'd like to do is take a couple of moments. Um, there are some of you that have had, that have the catechisms. Um, if you do, then please return the catechism at the end of the service. If you do not, take one with you, because this is our understanding, the catechism of the Polish National Catholic Church. We are of the Catholic tradition, and there are catechisms in every single denomination. And so this is ours. Uh, it does not get into depth, into theological discourses, but tries to bring to mind our faith. And I believe that each and every single one of us as ambassadors and emissaries of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are sent out. Did not Jesus say prior to his ascension, you will be my witnesses. And so we are our witnesses for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Whether it, to be, whether it is to be a member of our family or a friend or a neighbor that needs the grace of God, you are the teachers. You are the ones that will pass this profession of faith. So if we can, uh, and it's going to be a little bit of participation, um, if you feel comfortable when I ask the question and call upon you, please give the answer. If not, then I'll call on you again. So, if we can turn to page 12. Question 43, is there only one God? Wayne? Yes. Page 12, question 43. Is there only one God? Okay, what does it mean? Yes, there is only one God, because God is eternally perfect. He can have no equal. What's the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. This was actually the first commandment that Moses received on Mount Sinai. We talked about in today's first reading. Number 44, what do we mean by the Holy Trinity, Josh? By the Holy Trinity, we mean one and the same God in three divine persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Trinity. Yes. Question 45, how do we know that there are three persons in the Holy Trinity? Mary? We know that there are three persons in the Holy Trinity by the revealed word of God. Holy Scripture. What happened when Jesus was to be baptized by John? He went to the water where John was baptizing. And what happened after Jesus was being baptized by John? The Holy Spirit descended upon him. And then what happened after that? There was a voice that said, Thou art my son in whom I am well pleased. This is a scripture passage pointing to the Holy Trinity, and there are other scripture passages. And like I said, Holy Scripture is the divine authority. And so if we go on, question 46, where do we find confirmation for this belief? Cheryl? We find confirmation for this belief in the words of Jesus Christ. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That was Matthew 20 and 19. The Father and I are one, which is John 10:30. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth. John 14, 16 through Again, we find that Holy Scripture is the authority by which we know our faith. And how can we really be worthy Christians if we do not know our faith. These are very simple um, uh, statements. And like I said, it's not meant to be 
complicated. Number 47, are there three divine per are the three divine persons equal? Mary? Yes, all three divine persons. In the Unitarian Church, they believe that God is basically manifested, not in three divine persons, but a manifestation of the one. And so, with, within our church, the Catholic tradition, we have the uniqueness of being what we call a Trinitarian Church. We believe in one God, three divine persons. Um, number 48, John. How can there be three persons in one God? Because, because the three persons have one and the same nature. This is a mystery we cannot completely understand. It's like when it comes for the, the consecration of the bread and the wine. The Roman Catholics call it transubstantiation. Another term is co-substantiation. But you know how we deal with it in our church? We call it a mystery. We don't fully understand how it takes place, but we know it takes place. And there are certain mysteries, and one of which is the Holy Trinity. Number 49, with what prayer do we praise the Holy Trinity, Jimmy? We praise the Holy Trinity when we pray. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be. world will. The three standard prayers, the Lord's Prayer, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be. It is only during the season of Lent that there is a time in which we do not say the Glory Be, but rather, for us, thou hast suffered wounds. Uh, number, number 50, can you make the sign of the cross? And how do we say it? As I would teach, as a Gracie who's preparing for her First Holy Communion, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So we find that the cross helps us to remember the Holy Trinity. Number 51, uh, let's see. Vincent, what does the sign of the cross teach us? The sign of the cross teaches us that God is one and three divine persons, and the cross we make teaches us that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for us on the cross. Very simple, the Holy Trinity. And if you were called upon, you would say that we believe in the Holy Trinity, which we will actually, when we resume Holy Mass, we will have the Nicene Creed. Like I said, in the early church, there were a lot of a lot of discussions, there were a lot of different groups of that one religion of Christianity that tried to define not only the identity of Jesus Christ, but to try to find the relationship of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You know, I've heard people that said over the years, you know, Father, we're like the Roman Catholics. Well, we're not like the Roman Catholics, and I'll give you one example. We do not believe in what is known as the filioque way. The Orthodox Church does, but the Roman Catholic Church does not. We side with the Orthodox. And what is the filioque way? Well, actually, it is a part of the um, Roman Catholic Nicene Creed, of which we do not include. And so what, that, what would that be? And I'll end with our, our short um, discussion today. The Polish National Catholic Church, as well as some of the other churches, the Anglican, the Lutheran, even the Episcopalian, and mostly the Orthodox, we say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father who together with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. In the Roman Catholic Church, they have what is known as the filioque. And they say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who together with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. We do not say that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son, but rather the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. And again, we go back to say that God is the supreme being, the creator of all. Even though, if we look in the Old Testament, we read in the beginning that the Spirit of God moved across the face of the waters. And God said, not only let there be light, but let us make man in our own image and likeness. And so it is believed that when God made that statement, he was referring to his begotten, his eternal son, who came, who was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary and became man. This is our faith. And so, my brothers and sisters, please take a copy of the Catechism with you because we will, from time to time, not only discuss the different attributes of our, our own faith, but also with a better understanding that we, as witnesses, can go out into the world and be assured of our faith in Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I believe and walk of God, Father, Father the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all Father, that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one made with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and his Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive, Father Almighty, eternal God, this immaculate host, which I, your unworthy servant, offer to you, my living and true God, for my countless offenses and omissions, for all present here, for our nation, as well as for all faithful Christians, living and dead, and for all humanity, may it be for us a means to salvation and everlasting life. Lord God, you endued us with great dignity and worthiness. Through Jesus Christ, you would exalted, renewed, and sanctified.
brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Trinity in unity, as we offer our gifts of self and substance, we ask you to make them holy. Grant us an understanding of your inner life, for to that living mystery we have been called. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God. We do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in the trinity of one substance. For what we believe of your glory through your revelation, we also believe of your Son and of the Holy Spirit without difference or distinction in confessing the true and eternal God. We adore the distinction of persons, oneness in unity, and equality in majesty. And so therefore on this solemnity of the Holy Trinity, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, and all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his passion, 
before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of the Immaculate Host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar and to the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our daily 
What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Receive the body of the Lord. Receive the body of the blood of Christ. 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 The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and Source of the Spirit, you are the creator of all that exists 
and the originator of all that is good. You loved us in Christ even before the world was formed. Grant through this Holy Eucharist that our whole lives may be only a return to you from our first beginning through baptism in your holy name to our final goal. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the one worthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found a life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to, light, to the light. For he himself was not the light, the real light which gives light to every man who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Oh, yeah. 